me complimenting our solo. Yeah, right? I know, it's we were happy yeah, you came got, on. That, there's another word for that, but I won't say what it is. <laughs> hey, the host has got to flatter right. sometimes. <laughs> What's your reaction to what Frank said when clearly the exit interview is playing into this? I, I think listening to Frank, it's more realistic that he gets dealt maybe than I would have thought initially reading some of the stuff. The Knicks asking price is high, as it should be high. You should never go out there and look to trade talent like Christoph Porzingis if you're not getting a ridiculous package back. But the way that Frank explained it there, it seems like there is some damage here between Porzingis and between the Knicks. And he even said it, Frank himself, maybe maybe the Knicks at this point have to deal Porzingis, well, and that's a problem. Well, you know, that that's a good point. But if they can't deal him, it's a problem. How is he going to come back here and be happy under these circumstances? How is he going to play? I mean, it's they got a real dilemma on their hands by letting this get out. Well, it's interesting about repairing the relationship, which, which was an interesting topic before this story broke today. For sure. I, I think this is going to be a house cleaning. I think Porzingis gets dealt, and I know Melo has to wave his no trade, but I think this reflects, because look, Jackson is now meeting with a seven-foot finish player that they might draft at eight. Why bring in another guy that Carmelo Anthony can influence? I mean, Porzingis is in Team Melo. That's why he's on the trading block, among many reasons. Why would you bring in another young player, if you're Phil Jackson, who would be influenced by the star that you want out of here to run your offense? I think Melo and Porzingis are not Knicks. Well, I, I get the sense that Melo, at the very least, would be bought out if it came to Good a, luck selling tickets. Hmm. We'll yeah. see.